Welcome back to our channel. If you're preparing for a data analysis interview, you're in the right place. Today, we'll walk you through the top 10 most common questions you might face, along with tips on how to answer them. So, let's dive in. Question 1. What is the difference between data mining and data analysis? Data mining and data analysis are distinct yet related processes in data science. Data mining involves the extraction of hidden patterns, correlations, and insights from large datasets using techniques like clustering, classification, and association rule learning. It's focused on discovering previously unknown information. In contrast, data analysis is about inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data to understand its structure, draw conclusions, and support decision-making. While data mining is about uncovering patterns, data analysis is about making sense of data and using it to inform decisions. Question 2. How do you handle a missing dataset? Handling missing data in a dataset involves several strategies to maintain the integrity and usefulness of the data. The chosen method depends on the nature and extent of the missing data. Common techniques include removing records with missing values, which is feasible when the missing data is minimal. Imputation methods, such as filling in missing values with the mean, median, or mode, can also be used, though they might introduce bias. More advanced techniques like using regression or machine learning algorithms to predict missing values can provide more accurate results. Another approach is to use algorithms that can handle missing data inherently, like certain decision trees. It's crucial to analyze why data is missing to choose the most appropriate method and ensure that the handling process doesn't distort the dataset's underlying patterns. Question 3. Can you explain what AP value is? AP value is a statistical metric used in hypothesis testing to determine the significance of the results. It represents the probability of obtaining test results at least as extreme as the observed results, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. A low P value, typically less than 0.05, suggests that the observed data is unlikely under the null hypothesis, leading to its rejection in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Essentially, the p-value helps researchers understand whether their findings are statistically significant or if they could have occurred by random chance. Question 4. What are the assumptions of linear regression? The assumptions of linear regression are fundamental to ensuring the validity of the model's results. These assumptions include linearity, which means the relationship between the independent and dependent variables should be linear. Independence assumes that the residuals, errors, are independent of each other implying that there is no correlation between consecutive residuals. Homoscedasticity means that the residuals have constant variance across all levels of the independent variables. Additionally, the residuals should be normally distributed, which can be checked using a QQ plot. Finally, there should be no multicollinearity, meaning that the independent variables should not be highly correlated with each other. Violating these assumptions can lead to biased or inefficient estimates, making it crucial to check and address them before relying on the model's outcomes. Question 5. Describe a time when you had to explain complex data analysis results to a non-technical audience. In a previous role as a supply chain analyst, I was tasked with presenting the results of a complex data analysis on inventory management to a group of senior managers, most of whom had limited technical backgrounds. The analysis involved advanced statistical models to forecast demand and optimize stock levels across over 120 stores. To make the findings accessible, I used clear and simple language, avoided jargon, and employed visual aids like graphs and charts to illustrate key points. I also drew analogies to familiar business scenarios to explain how the data-driven insights could enhance operational efficiency and reduce costs. By focusing on the practical implications of the analysis, I was able to engage the audience and ensure they understood how the recommendations could be implemented to achieve tangible benefits. Question 6. What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? Supervised and unsupervised learning are two main types of machine learning. In supervised learning, the model is trained on a labeled dataset, meaning that each training example is paired with an output label. This type of learning is used for tasks like classification and regression, where the goal is to predict the output for new data based on learned patterns. In contrast, unsupervised learning involves training the model on data without labeled responses. The goal here is to identify hidden patterns or intrinsic structures within the data. Examples of unsupervised learning tasks include clustering, where data points are grouped based on similarity, and association, where relationships between variables are discovered. Question 7. How do you ensure data quality and integrity? 
Ensuring data quality and integrity involves implementing a combination of practices and controls throughout the data lifecycle. This includes data validation at the point of entry to catch errors early, routine data cleaning to correct inaccuracies, and standardizing data formats for consistency. Implementing robust data governance policies helps maintain data accuracy, completeness, and reliability. Regular audits and monitoring can detect and address anomalies or deviations promptly. Additionally, securing data through proper access controls and encryption safeguards against unauthorized modifications or breaches. By establishing clear protocols and using automated tools where possible, I ensure that data remains trustworthy and fit for analysis. Question 8. What tools and software are you proficient in for data analysis? I'm proficient in a variety of tools and software commonly used for data analysis, including Python, with libraries like Pandas, NumPy, and SciPy for data manipulation and analysis, R, for statistical computing and visualization, SQL, for database querying and management, and Excel, for data organization and basic analysis. Additionally, I can work with visualization tools such as Tableau and Power BI to create insightful visual representations of data trends and patterns. Whether it's cleaning and transforming data, performing statistical analysis, creating interactive dashboards, or automating data workflows, these tools allow me to handle various aspects of data analysis effectively.